Good morning, everybody. Lots to get to here today. Let's get right to our top story this morning. The man who opened fire at a Poway synagogue killing one person is scheduled to learn his sentence. And we are expecting emotional testimony before he learns his fate. We say it's Evan Arani live at the Hall of Justice downtown now with a closer look here this morning. Good morning, Evan. Good morning, Eric and Sella. That's right. Just around 830 today, a couple hours from now, we're expected to hear what the sentencing will be for that man who carried out that shooting back in 2019. Now, keep in mind, these are only going to be the sentencing uh, here. This is just the sentencing hearing for the state charges. We'll hear the sentencing for the federal charges in December, but either way, they're seeking a joint life sentence charge. So it, when we hear that sentence today, it will likely be a life sentence plus a certain number of years, which we will mention in just a minute, but we want to go back to July. In July, Ernest pled guilty to murder and attempted murder charges for fatally wounding one woman and injuring two others at that synagogue in Poway. In an online open letter, Ernest spewed anti-Semitic remarks about a need to protect the quote European race and that he wished he could kill more. Ernest is also facing additional time due to arson charges after setting fire to a mosque in Escondido in March of 2019. The former Rancho Panisquitos uh, resident and Cal State San Marcos student carried out that shooting on the last day of Passover in 2019. Today, he's expected to see a life sentence plus 137 years. Again, this is just the sentencing for his state charges. Federal prosecutors did not seek the death penalty in this case. Instead, they're jointly seeking a prison term of life in prison plus 30 years. That would then be added on to his sentence when they have those federal hearings in December. Now, keep in mind, uh, the sentencing hearing that we're expected to hear at uh, 830 today is also going to come along with a statement from the San Diego District Attorney, Summer Steffen. That's going to be following that hearing. We're also expected to hear a lot of testimony, likely from family members who were affected by this shooting again on that last day of Passover back in 2019. So now three years later or two years later, I should say, we're hearing more and, and uh, hopefully uh, letting these families kind of find, finally kind of find that closure that they need if they're able to. But again, the state uh, sentencing going to take place today, federal sentencing taking place in December. Outside of the Hall of Justice, I'm Evan Narani, News 8. Evan, thank you. And new this morning, an officer is hurt in the East County. And right now, the search is on for the person who did it. It happened just before 2 o'clock this morning on Avocado Avenue. Witnesses say the officer went up to the driver of the car and asked him to come out of the vehicle. That is when they say the driver put the car into reverse, hitting the officer. Then the driver crashed into a palm tree nearby and took off. Sheriff's deputies are also assisting with this investigation. An investigation underway after a crash in North Park happened just before 11 o'clock last night on Oregon Street and University Avenue. Witnesses say the driver of a car was turning when a person on a motorcycle hit the driver. The motorcyclist was taken to the hospital. No one was seriously hurt. Now, police are trying to find the people involved in a robbery in Point Loma. It happened at the CVS on Santa Monica Avenue around 1045 last night. Investigators say three men walked into the store and one of them pointed a gun at an employee and demanded money. The group grabbed a number of cash drawers and took off. Call police if you have any information. The fight over mask mandates in schools is back in the spotlight. This morning, an emergency hearing will be held over a lawsuit filed against the state. Yeah, plaintiffs say this is just the beginning as they begin to fight back against mandates for students. News 8's Allison Royal is live in Vista with what we can expect. Good morning, Allison. Hey, good morning, Stella and Eric. So that is what we are expecting this morning. Reopen California schools and let them breathe are two different groups of primarily parents, and they are suing, saying that it should be up to parents and not the government to decide if children go ahead and wear masks to schools. And it's all going to happen this morning in a Vista courtroom. So there's a lot of information they're bringing forward. The, the question is, will that be enough to actually get an injunction when they'll probably be um, just as, as equally vehement voices on the other side. Our legal analyst, Wendy Patrick, weighing in there. So let me give you a little bit of background. There is an emergency hearing this morning to request a temporary restraining order. Previously, Governor Gavin Newsom called for universal masking of students at schools statewide, that is kindergarten through 12th grade. To break it down, the lawsuit says that there are a lot of restrictions that kids face in California schools and that they are just not supported by science and could even do more harm than good. It alleges that mask wearing does not improve kids' health and is a barrier to effective learning in schools. It also argues against quarantining otherwise healthy kids 
and testing asymptomatic kids. Orange County schools are also suing Newsom over the statewide mask mandate in schools. Statewide Superintendent Tony Thurman said it is up to each individual district to go ahead and enforce this mandate and that he will not punish districts that go choose not to. The Let Them Breathe movement has parents from all over the country but actually started locally here in Poway. There's a lot of parents when we're talking about mask choice that they're more concerned about the mental health impact because we know that's more deadly uh, than COVID is for children. Let Them Breathe has already raised about $150,000 on GoFundMe for these legal fees. And this hearing kicks off in just a couple of hours. It starts at 830. We'll bring you all the latest updates here and on our website, which is CBS8.com. Eric and Stella. Allison, thank you. And today marks the deadline for health care workers across the state to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. California was the first in the nation to announce the mandate back in August. Those who are not vaccinated must have a medical or religious exemption. And we've reached out to a number of major local health care groups to see where their vaccination number stands. Here's a closer look at that. Sharp Healthcare, 91.7% of their workforce is vaccinated with 3.8% exempt. Kaiser, about 97% of staff vaccinated. And at Scripps Health, 140 of their more than 16,000 employees are not vaccinated and have not filed exemptions. We also reached out to UC San Diego Health and Rady Children's Hospital, but we haven't heard back from them yet. Well, the state's ban on evictions expires tonight, but there are still some protections starting tomorrow. Landlords who want to evict a tenant must show they've already applied for rental assistance. There are also several local programs to help tenants with rent or if they've been served an eviction notice. We have several links to several resources at CBSA.com. Just click on the help button. This morning, we know the names of the woman and two-year-old boy who died in a fall at Petco Park. Police identified 40-year-old Raquel Wilkins and her son Denzel Browning Wilkins. Raquel's father says she was smart as a whip and that baby Denzel was her life. He is flying here today from Florida for the funeral. Detectives say Wilkins and her son were at a concession stand before the fall on Saturday. Police are asking for any more potential witnesses to please come forward. And this morning, the Grossmont Union High School District says a Valhalla High School campus supervisor did violate the district's restraint policy when he tried to break up a fight last month. Images and video of the fight and takedown were seen widely on social media, with some comparing it to the restraint used on George Floyd. The district says an independent investigator recommends additional training and a transfer for the employee. But the district says whatever actions are taken will remain confidential. And just hours ahead of a midnight deadline, lawmakers are voting on a budget resolution to avert a government shutdown this morning. Democrats and Republicans reached a deal late yesterday to keep the government funded through December 3rd. The Senate will vote later this morning, then send it to the House. The measure is not expected to increase the nation's debt ceiling. I know a lot of the uh, pumpkin patches around town yeah. are going to be uh, opening up here tomorrow, and so people right. may be making some plans. It's, it's October time. 1st tomorrow. Yeah. Wait, tomorrow's October 1st already? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, Sneaks it up is. on you. That's right. It's September 30th. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the last day of the month, you guys. So, yeah, bills need to be paid tomorrow. Pumpkin patches need to be visited. Uh, you know, there's nothing like uh, pumpkin patches during the heat of the, the sunshine and summer-like weather. That's very San Diego, actually. Usually this time of year in October, we do tend to see more sunshine. We get Santa Ana wind events, and that's exactly what we're uh, experiencing today. So uh, we do have a little change in our weather pattern from the first half. Now here we are in the second half. So Mount Woodson's camera showing very clear skies, which was not the case for a lot of this week. Uh, since last week, in fact, we had that low pressure that brought in the clouds, and now uh, surface area high pressure is what's bringing in this right here. No clouds, clear skies, and drier conditions. So you'll likely need to put on a little lotion, extra lotion today. Uh, 61 degrees now for downtown San Diego because it is so clear. We do have this chill in the air. Those uh, clear skies tend to do that to us. So 46 degrees in Ramona, 52 Poway. Same with Escondido. Upper 50s for Oceanside, Carlsbad, Del Mar. You have not broken 60 yet. And right now as we wait for that official sunrise in about 30 minutes, we will see our temperatures reach the coolest part of the day.
today. So you see that 24 hour temperature change. We're all cooler than yesterday at this time and we're also drier. So relative humidity numbers that will drop down into the teens and single digits. So I want to take you through the next 24 hours just to show you the impact of our wind direction. When it comes from the east, look what happens. It just zaps all the moisture out of the air. So 8% relative humidity in Ramona down into the teens for places like Escondido by noon today. You will certainly notice that dryness. It's also going to be warmer today. I'll get into those details coming up.